Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate being able to speak from, from a place actually, if you said it's dessert. If it's dessert, it's eaten mess because it is a mess. It's, a, it's this, this parenting journey um, that has been an absolute roller coaster. It's one that if I try to make notes, they too are a mess because there are so much things that have gone on and so much learning through that, but a lot of pain. So I speak out of a place of mistakes and pain. When my uh, youngest daughter, who's now 27, when she was 13, I was encouraged to go on a parenting course by social services, not because of anything I had done, but because of the, some of the things that um, she had been, um, has happened to her. And it was the best thing I ever did. And the woman there that, well, not the best thing I ever did, there's other things, but the woman on that course said to me, I don't speak and lead this session of parenting because I got it all right, but because I got a lot wrong. And that's where I come from today because I got a lot wrong. Um, but by the grace of God, my kids, I can say today that my eldest is 33. And then there's one of uh, 29 and, and one and my daughter's 27. They are godly people today. They walk in a place of justice. Uh, they would not walk past a person who is homeless. They'll get in the mess with them. They'll sit, literally sit on the floor. Um, and I am so proud. But, but that comes from a place of... If somebody asks me, well, what's your experience of challenges in parenting? I have a list and it's not exclusive. There's more self-harm, addiction, sexual identity, bulimia, abuse, violence and attempted suicides are to name but a few of my experiences of a mother. So a mother whose heart has been broken, a mother who has had a breakdown because she blamed herself, um, particularly when my son was in prison it had to be my fault weren't I were the one who was supposed to hold it together the but a lot of it is come from um uh, yeah it's all come from a place of brokenness a broken marriage on my part and so of course you take that blame until you sit in the place and learn otherwise that yes there are responsibilities to be taken um we spoke yesterday about honesty of sitting with your children and being honest and the power of saying sorry the power of saying sorry for when mistakes have been made and from where they've learned behavior um, from from myself and from my um, ex-husband of of the things that we just got wrong and forgiveness the power of forgiveness as well but I, I, so I just want to share some of those some of those um, challenges with you and and how I, I believe that we've we've got through them as a as a family and so uh, the other day I was well back in the summer actually I was teaching my she was then five on my five-year-old granddaughter to ride her bike and you you've done it you you know the thing you hold the back of the saddle this is how I do it anyway but you steady very firmly uh, as much as you can the front the front bar so you've got them they're not going anywhere but they think they are they, they don't quite trust that you're not going to let go but you hold on for a little while then you see that they're a bit more confident and you take your hand off the the rail but you keep it on the saddle and eventually through tears and trembling mostly theirs but also yours a bit you you you, you let go and you see them ride but what are you going to see you're going to see them fall aren't you they're going to fall off and, and I think that's, for me, that's, as I was teaching her the other day, and finally she's got it and she's off, I, I just came to my mind, that's what parenting is like. That's what, I think that's what good parenting is like, is, is just to let them go, eventually let them go. The thing is, that gets very messy, especially when you are trying to overcompensate for the things that you got wrong, for the broken marriage, for the arguments that were said in front of them. For the father that came in and we had to lock ourselves in the room because he was drunk and you, we don't know what he was going to do. So you overcompensate. And I think what you do in that is to try, you don't let your hands off that saddle in time for them to learn. You, you feel guilty all the time. That doesn't help them or anybody else. So 
bearing that all of that in mind some of the things I'll share some of those experiences with you because what I've realized is that there are many parents that have been through things but feel and sit in shame they sit in shame for far too long and because they think they're the only one um, I've met clergy people over the years and I found out that their son was a drug, drug, drug addict that gave me so much encouragement which seems weird but it just made well, it's not just me that there are people other people that have tried their best but somehow it's all gone wrong and I do have to say that sometimes we do have to take some responsibility for that and sometimes it's not about doing. For me, it was staying in a broken relationship for far too long, a toxic relationship. I stayed for far too long. And so there's behaviours learnt in that. So my all of my children have witnessed violence. That's not good. Of course, it's not good. And they're some of the things we've had to together, right, with their dad and I have sat and apologised for but some of the things uh, uh, that, that, that I've experienced, have, of course, have helped me to help others. So when I'm working alongside a woman whose son has been uh, shot dead and the police asked me to, to work with her because this is the bizarre thing. The policeman said she's not got over it yet. And it's been a year. Just bizarre. Um, why would she get over it ever? But a year is nothing. And working alongside that woman and realising that she hadn't realized even who her son was because for her uh, innocent son had, had been shot dead what i knew from the environment i was living in that her son yes he should never have been shot dead but he was one of those that were doing the shooting as well before but she didn't know that so she not only had to grit wasn't my place to tell her either it it she not only had to grieve for her dead son, she had to grieve for the son that she didn't even really know when she found out those things because the police were going to tell her. But I mention that because my experience and my brokenness as a mother helped me to help another. And of course, that has been the story over and over and over again. In ministry, these list of things I listed to you, of course, they're going to be something that equips me but would I have chosen them of course not you who would choose any of those things for their children to go through uh, who would choose to have a broken heart for me the thing that got me through all of that of course is the power of prayer of praying and praying and praying and seeing um, the answers to that and sometimes not for years not seeing the answers to the prayers that I prayed for, the tears that I wept. I'm going to share a little bit of that, if I may. So I read a book that I recommend to any parent, if you haven't already uh, read it, and I read this years ago, The Power of the Praying Parent. So reading through that book, and it gives you some, um, just, just be praying for their future, um, be praying about their, you know, their, 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 their marriages in, in the future, even from when they're really little, uh, just praying blessings over their life and everything else. I used to go into my son's room, my eldest boy's room, and while, while they were sleeping, I would pray over them. And if he woke up, he'd be frightened out of me. What are you doing, mum? You know, all this weird stuff going on. But I'd pray and I'd pray in the room, Lord, if there's anything in this room that shouldn't be in there, will you show it to me? Dangerous prayer to pray when then you start to find, I found weapons. I found drugs a lot of them um but I also found the more the other funny thing so I found once I found a, a cd and, and I just thought well what's why am I I was drawn towards this cd and then I looked on the back of it and saw the lyrics and it was I I would liken to it as like devil worship music he didn't know that but the, because uh, being a Christian and knowing it's some of the bible when you look and saw the absolute anti to that the words in that, I thought that's going into his mind. So I, I remember saying to him, what's, what's this, what's this CD? It's not mine. It's my mates. Why are you listening to that? And he said, I don't know, mama, but it's giving me bad vibes. I said, get rid of it out of the house. The music they listen to, we know that, don't we? We know the power of music that they listen to. And look at these kids now, look at the internet and the things that they're up against now. Another brilliant book I read once is a book called uh, Bringing Home the Prodigals 
um, and that book talks about the teenage life. It talks about the life 30 years ago that I would have been in, well, no, a lot longer than that as a teenager now. Um, there was a corridor that was your teenage life. And in that corridor, you had uh, the, the, all these doors and they were closed, the doors of drugs, the doors of sex, the doors of all these different things, these vices, they were closed. And now and again, one of your friends would kind of open that door and go into it and everybody would go in or, you know, they would have a reputation because they went into that door. These days, the very same doors are there. They're wide open. And if you don't go into those doors, you get talked about. So if you don't go in that sex door, they're whispering about you. If you don't experiment with drugs, they're whispering about you. So the challenges for our kids today, for the teenagers today in particular, and the younger ones are extreme. And we know all of this. We know the story. I've been praying this week. I got a text message from somebody who's been asking me to pray for a nine-year-old girl who is two and a half stone. She's been admitted to hospital with anorexia. I mean, this is what we're dealing with, um, the, with social media and everything else, with the way we should look. So the challenges today are, many of them are the same, but they're, they're just so much more deeper. We know that, we know that story. And the only, I guess, apart from reading those wonderful books that help us to understand what it is to be a better parent, um, the best reading for me, of course, is the Bible and the instruction that, that that gives about parenting and about love. So when I find the drugs, particularly I talked about my daughter in, in, in her room. What do I deal with that harshly? Yeah, you could do that and you could go mad and everything. Uh, what I dealt, how I dealt with that particular one, having learned from the previous ones with which I would call outrageous love of calling her in, of showing what we found and how can we deal with this together. Finding out the people that she's got involved with, it with and how we're gonna go and see them. And, and it was a terrifying moment, much more for my little girl than my big boy. You know, that was my little girl. And she'd got mixed up in all the same things her big brother had got mixed up in. But that love, and she, I got called every single name under the sun for doing that because I've called her out of this but to loving her through it of getting the money that I needed to get together to pay off people now that's you know we could say that is terribly wrong and it to set and it is in many ways the mistake I guess you could say I made was that tough love I couldn't do it I, I couldn't do that in the way I should I did do it but not in the way I should so I never called the police on my kids when I, I actually I've had policemen come in when I was working with, closely work with them in the church and they showed me a picture of do I recognize any of these children involved in antisocial behavior it was my children in the picture <laughs> he knew that this particular policeman knew it and he was winding me up but it's it's that kind of thing and that's what I, we need to have tough love I, that's a mas massive mistake I made um by the grace of God, we've come through that. One story, one more story I'll share with you. I felt my son phoned me up. I guess he was about 17 now, my eldest boy. And he said, mum, I'm in a flat and it's just been raided. I need you to go into my bedroom. There's cocaine in the drawer. Take it out and hide it for me. Well, I, I couldn't do, no. I fell on my knees and I asked God, what, what am I gonna do? Now I knew the right thing to do, because he said the police are gonna come down to my house and raid it now. So the right thing I guess might have been to leave those drugs in there and they found them. I knew that I couldn't hide them for him. That was out of the question. He wasn't getting them back. What do I do? I ran round to my minister's house in floods of tears. What do I do? His wife said, you leave them there. He said, I couldn't do that, get rid of them. That's what I did. I got rid of those drugs. And when my son came in, the police didn't end up coming to the house. And he went absolutely berserk. Of course he did. That I he was he was dealing in drugs. He's now got to find that money to, to put back. And I didn't help him with that. I didn't phone the police on him, but I did, he was now in danger. Um and that's something, you know, that he got through and 
everything else. So I'm, te- I'm just being raw and honest. I made huge mistakes. As I say, my son ended up um, doing five years in prison. He became a Christian in prison. He went there knowing that justice had to be done. He, because he got into violence and all sorts of things. And as he, as he came out still struggling with addiction, and he still does. But I often remind him of the quote, it's a Nelson Mandela, and he says, don't judge my success by, uh, don't judge me my success by where I am or something. It's how many times I've fallen down and got back up again. And for me, that's, that's what I always have to remind my, my son now, the journey that he's been through and he stands up. So uh, a story of mistakes, a story where I believe now that perfect love casts out all that fear a a story where I would do things differently with my grandchildren talk to them differently speak to their parents how to do it differently be a bit tougher um but still that love is the overarching thing of being a parent I'm sorry